Hi there, welcome back to Scribbles and Ink Stains. My name is Mary, and today's video will be a chattier voiceover overview of how I'll do my currently inked videos in 2023. So let's start with an overview of content so you can jump around if your time is limited. This will be a chattier introduction to my planned methodology. And just as a disclaimer, just because I'm sort of setting things up this way in the beginning, I'm going to keep an open mind and sort of be willing to change things as I go if, uh, if I need to, if things don't work out for me, if I'm not getting what I need to get out of this planned system. So the chaos you're looking at on the screen is bath day at the end of my winter break, uh, where I cleaned everything, all of my fountain pens that were currently inked, and there were, um, I didn't count, frankly, there are a lot here, there are a lot laying here on the table um, in various stages of disarray. 2023, my fountain pen stash grew pretty um, exponentially, and so did my ink stash. And what you're seeing is sort of the result of just flying by the seat of my pants and inking pens when they were new to me or when I wanted to or when some of those new shiny baubles came into my stash. So there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but what I found was happening to me was I was sort of cycling through the idea of the hedonic treadmill, which is a term in psychology where... I bring things into my life, into my collections, into my hobbies. I get a little blip of pleasure, and then very quickly, my level of happiness sort of returns to the baseline. And then the cycle is that, of course, then I look to the next thing, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there are some known ways to mitigate the effects or to sort of break that cycle of the hedonic treadmill. And one of those ways is just taking more joy in what you have, reflecting on what you have, and also setting intentions and reflecting on the process. So that's what I hope to achieve with this new system for Currently Ink. My plans are to ink eight, possibly nine pens at any given time. I might have one or two on the side for special projects, but not in January. In January, I'm really going to try to sort of set a clear system. And the really cool thing is because I'm recording this voiceover on the 15th and I've already been using the eight pens that I decided to ink up, it's working. I've already troubleshooted three of the pens where I used to hate the nib and I've been able to make them wetter, but that's jumping the gun and I don't want to share any spoilers. So let's look at my methodology for picking inks this month. My fundamental methodology this month rests on the idea that I really want to use the samples that came in in December. I feel like December was, it just added so much and I haven't explored any of those things yet. I guess you would have to say at least the first quarter of the year needs to be a deep exploration of all the new sample inks to me and elephant in the room, the new pens to me in 2022. So the first quarter is that sort of deep reflective dive. What did I get? Why did I get it? Do I want it? Does it belong with me? If I don't love it, who will love it? How can I offload it? That kind of thing. Step one of this process involved setting a goal of swatching, at least on the coloring cards, all of the new to me inks from, this is, this would be between the end of Inkvent 2022 and Christmas morning. So what you're looking at here is sort of the Christmas gift scenario. So I did that. I thought I would just lay out the new ink swatch cards that I am considering and I'll sort of talk us through that selection. I can already see that I'm going way too deep here. Okay, so I have too many. <laughs> Let's go through a preliminary cut and then I'll do the same thing. I'll look at how I want to pick my pens and we'll bring the two ideas together and I will ink them and sample them for you. I know that I have Ferris Wheel Press, Queen and Castle inked, carrying over from December. I've got some 
adhesive on there. I'm not going to worry about that now. Okay, so that is one pen. That is one of my eight or nine that I'm committing to. Uh, the other is a my Glow Green Twisby Eco. This is filled with platinum carbon black. I'll always keep an indelible black in an extra fine nib for art purposes. Okay, the other two inks I need, need, <laughs> that I want to select are for this kind of artsy craftsy project that I've got going on. I'm taking a class at Domestica called What's it called? Experimental Portraiture with Ink, Tea, and Alcohol. It's a course by Carne Griffiths, an artist that I follow over there. And what I probably will do is some portrait experiments based on some life drawings that I have in my, in my portfolio. Okay, so I need a yellow and a brown and a blue for that experimentation. I think I'll I think story blue would be a nice flesh tony blue. Okay, so this will be three pens for art experimentation. I don't know that these will work together, but again, that's what I will be documenting in January. So we're already at four pens. Okay, let's look at picking pens. I don't want to go too much further without looking at how I want to pick pens. So let's do that. We've already said that I'm bringing in the Twisby Eco Glow Green with Platinum Carbon, the Eco T with Ferris Wheel Press Queen and Castle. This is currently my Shimmer Earthy Holy Grail. I love this color family. Okay, so what newer to me pens do I want to ink up and play with? And I feel like there are some clear contenders here. My Eco... Special Edition Rose Gold Jade I purchased in a medium. Cannot resist. I'm such a hardcore fan of the Twisby Eco. I am a right-handed writer, so I don't mind the Eco tees. I can see if you were a lefty or if you have a style where you underwrite, where this grip section on the Eco tees would be a problem for you. Lamy 2000 is a pen I want to get to know better. And I'm considering, also for gold nib, want to like this pen more than I like it. Um, I purchased early, early in 2022, The Vanishing Point by Pilot in an extra fine, uh, just because it's so convenient as a daily carry. And it's the size is great for journaling and Hobonichis, but I hate the converter with a passion. It just has such low capacity. And quite frankly, when I've inked this, it tends to dry, be one of the pens in my stash that dries out frequently. For the drawing project, I'm going to use these little Kawakos. I already know, one color per pen. The artist that I referred to earlier, Carne Griffiths, he basically uses these in his demonstrations and they're a little bit color-coded, the system that he uses, so that makes sense to me. Um, he also uses the pen in two ways. Uh, for his mark making, both standard and also reverse writing when he needs a finer hatch mark. So that's pretty cool. I think I'll do that. This is a broad nib though. I might have to change that out. We'll see. Let's see where we are with pens now if I don't go any further. I'm at eight pens. Art already inked. Okay, that really only gives me four pens for journaling, two mediums, two extra fine, and I feel like I want to add another, at least another one pen, but let's do what I, let's start to pull things together. I feel like my Narwhal Original Plus, it, this is a vacuum fill, this tends to be a go-to daily carry for me. I bring it to work. I don't really hesitate to bring it to work. I haven't lost it yet, knock on wood. I just love how it writes. Am I okay with that decision? I don't have any broads. Do I want a fun broad? Because technically, am I counting my art pens? Yes, I'm counting my art pens because I want 
to spend, I want to commit to actually spending the time to doing the drawing. So that is going to be it for my daily carry pens. Let's match them up with inks. And at that point, if I need to add a new pen to get the right ink combination, I will do so. Okay, so in my Coecos, here's how it's going to roll. I'm going to have a brown pen, a yellow pen, and a blue pen. In my Eco, I already have Ferris Wheel Press. Now I have two Gold Nib Extra Fine pens that need wet inks, and I want to be able to write with these in my journals and be able to read the text. That means, I believe, I'm going Monteverde Chameleon on my Lamy, and I want a non-shimmer, fairly dark, wet color for my vanishing point. And since I, I'm going to break a little bit of my system, since I want an ink in this pen that I know is wet and flowy, am I going to break my system? No, I'm not going to break my system. Dang it. Yeah, actually, I'm going to try the Amaero in this pen. Uh, the Uroshizuki inks are wet, so I know, and this one is a really bright blue, so that covers, that covers that. Okay, that means I have two pens left to ink. The black is just a carryover. All right, let's see. I don't really have any green inks here. Do I want to go back to my... Greens. Olive Swirl was pretty spectacular. Do I want to do Olive Swirl instead? Olive Swirl is not... A sh yeah, it is a shimmer. How could I have forgotten that one? Maybe I don't have my swatch card in my stack. Yeah, okay. Even better. Olive Swirl. And then for my purple ride or die. Okay, let's decide on one of the samples. And I really should do a diamond. I think I'll do Ghost. Ghost is fun. Okay, so in this section, I'm going to go over what I'm, how I'm going to log my currently inks. I'm going to use my daily carry, which is a Hobonichi Weeks Mega. And I'll be using the pages in the back to track and reflect on my currently inked pens. So let's begin. Um, ironically, this is last year's week's mega because I left my daily carry at work. Um, I forgot to carry it home with me over the weekend. Anyway, uh, yeah, ironically. January. We'll start with the two carryover pens. This is kind of the portion that I'm really leaning on Simone and Chris Sands because I love their process of reflecting on their inks. They're not just logging them and using them. So I will log in my swatches in my daily carry. I like having them with me. And then I'll go back at the end of the month and make that decision of what pens, if any, do I want to carry forward. I'll be able to reflect on so this will be a, this is a commitment for the month. I'll be using all of these pens for long form journaling, for letters. I've got a, some stationary pals I want to reach out to. I've got holiday thank yous and family thank you cards from the holidays. I'll be using, as I mentioned, three of these pens, well, four if you count this one, for art making, for wash drawings, for illustrating found poems. And I'll share all of that with you here on my channel in 2023, just to hold myself accountable for, again, devoting a, at least a portion of my time every week to making artwork. And some of that will be also in the form of plein air sketches and uh, that kind of thing. And last but not least, I'll be doing some cursive writing practice because my handwriting is really horrible. Most importantly, I'll be logging 
at the end of the month, all the feels about the pen. I'll be, yeah, just going through that process. How do I like the ink? How do I like the pen? Only through sort of devoting at least a year's study to this am I, am I going to really understand what pens and inks and what combinations are really my holy grails and what are my favorites for art and what are my favorites for journaling and what are my favorites to bring to, to school, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is the Twisby Eco in Glow Green. The nib is extra fine. And this is platinum, carbon, black. It's kind of gunky in here. I probably should flush this, clean the pen, and then re-ink it with the same ink. But yeah, I've just had so much pen cleaning to do that I'm a little lazy. Okay, let's look at the Lamy 2000. What a pretty ink pen combo. This is a wet ink and I love the plummy purple color. So this is my Lamy 2000. Extra fun. Um, when I first inked this, I, I did have kind of a problem with it burping all over the place, but this time when I loaded it, I raised the piston and then released and then lowered the piston again to release three good-sized dollops of ink, so I'm not having that same problem with it burping. Knock on wood. At least it hasn't burped yet. Okay, and this is the Monte Verde Chameleon. I guess I'll give you some squiggles. Chris does a little wet test. That is nice and wet. Um, should I do that with this one too? Yeah, why not? Um, quick dryer. So again, perfect for art and watercolor. Okay, let's look at this, my little love-hate relationship with my... The grip I don't mind, it's uh... Oh, it's kind of a feedbacky nib. It's not nearly as smooth as the Lamy 2000, but of course, I'm liking this super bright blue. This is, actually I'm pretty happy with this. This is the Pilot Vanishing Point. Extra fine with Pilot Euro. Shizuku Ama Iro, and I have a sample of that. I should have written sample up there too. It is, there's my little super wet, um, but really bright. I'm liking that. Bright and legible on the page, so this will be a nice long form journaling combination. Let's look at, this is the Narwhal Original Plus Medium Nib loaded with Diamine. I need to open that or it's going to go dry. Diamine Ghost from the 20 22 ink vent. I think this will be a lovely journal pen. Super wet. Yeah, I think I'm going to like that. I just put a little bitty fill on that too, so. 
I forgot to do my little carryover pen at the top. That's okay. I want to be very forgiving of myself this year. Twisby. Ego. T. This one is a broad and it is Ferris Wheel Press Queen and Castle. Super juicy, wet nib. Great with the shimmer. I don't have my card for this, but this is Olive Swirl. Very wet pen and nib. Lovely. No feedback. Medium. And it's with Diamine. Olive Swirl. Oops. RL from Inkment 2022. I love it. That will be a lovely journal ink pen combination, I think. Maybe letters, too. The Ghost might be a little light for letters. Queen and Castle's a little light for letters, but the Lamy 2000 even the Ama Eero and this will be fun letter pens. And then that brings us to the three Kawaikos, which are for art. Not a great flower out of that. Is it? This is the Kawaiko Sport Brass with a filled with diamine. Three Kings. Ink vent. 2022. Now for this, I'm going to do reverse writing. Because some of the hatching, I will be using these pens in reverse. It's not terrible. Give myself a little sample wetness. Yeah, that's lovely. I think that will be a um, contender for journaling as well. This is probably going to be a fail as far as color. Um, I might be able to get it to work. We'll see. So far, this is not what I had in mind for drawing. Um, loaded with. I just hate shimmer inks in this broad nib. Well, I said I was committing to it, so I'm committing to it. This is supposedly a broad. It's a really crappy broad. It's just not wet. And I've flossed it. I really, I've flossed it. I've done everything I'm comfortable doing to it to make it wetter. Just does not compete with those Twisbees. Okay, this is much better. Mellow Blue. It's a collection series that you can tell by the silver finial, but I'm not going to write that because I'm running out of room. I'm going to see how wet this... Uh, it seems like a... Uh, it's not a super wet ink nib combination. Ferris Wheel Press. It's better in the writing than it was there. Maybe it just needed time still to flow and feed the, fill the feed. Okay, Ferris Wheel Press, storied blue. Scratchy nib, not my favorite. 
And when I hatch in reverse, it's even worse. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure I'll be happy with these. Yeah, I should have just got three Ecos for my little art pens. Anyhow, that's what uh, that's what I'll learn this month. That's that's why we're doing this. Yeah, I guess my final note to myself is to be consistent. This is a pattern that I'm sticking with so that I can duplicate it without a New Year's scale production <laughs> every month. So I, what I'm trying to avoid is getting in that situation of randomly inking tons of pens on a whim and getting myself to that state of being just overwhelmed and then having, you know, 30 pens to clean, which really sucks. Nobody wants to be in that position. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for giving me reason to dig into these ideas and check back with me at the end of January for all the thoughts on how this, if this worked, what I liked, what I didn't like, if I'm willing to part with any pens, that kind of thing. Next video coming at you will be all of my fountain pens. I need a baseline for having more sensible acquisition policies for 2023. So thanks so much for joining me and for subscribing over the past year and offering up such rich conversation about fountain pens, inks, planners, and intentions through your comments and your own content. Because of you, I was able to reach a channel milestone of 500 subscribers, which is really amazing to me considering that I'm not the kind of person that like to approach people and talk to people, but YouTube has that interesting balance between anonymity and connection that I think really works for quite a few of us here in the hobby. This channel has become a great way for me to hold myself accountable and to keep thinking about thinking in order to learn more about these hobbies or the rabbit holes that I jump into at times with no with uh, gusto first and thought second. Spoiler is I actually was able to use this notebook and fix most of my nib issues with these three Koika pens. Uh, they are each wetter now. Some of them still need some smoothing work, which I am approaching with baby steps. But again, thank you so much. Let me know in the comments below what your changes are for your currently inks. If you're overwhelmed with your kind of hedonic treadmill situation, I would love to hear about it. And um, yeah, I have lots of letters to write, so please forgive me if I collected your mailing address and haven't done anything with it yet. December and January for educators is just a really, really hectic, busy time. When it comes to work, I'm just, yeah, I, I haven't figured out that work-life balance yet. And yeah, I may before retirement, but I doubt it. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in my next video. Ciao.